is Viba Podcast. Thank you for joining in our morning daily devotion. We looked at six days of pain, suffering and healing. Just as God rested on the seventh day, let me try and wrap this up for you so that we are able to find rest in God's grace today. Nothing about Paul was normal. Abundant in wisdom, understanding, spirituality, intellectualism, unique experiences in God. He had influence, charisma, blessed with relationships. Have you met the kind of people who do big things? When they are right, they make headlines. When they are wrong, the same holds true. When they lose big, they lose really big. God set Paul aside, used him in a way that was way above the others. He didn't walk with Jesus. Less experience with Christ than the original twelve. He had brought more to the table than they did. Most of the New Testament written by one man. He was, as far as I know, the first Christian terrorist. Reputation for destroying Christians. They were horrified of him until Christ met him one day. And the same God he spoke so terribly against knocked him off his feet. Oh, won't God change your life and mine? The trouble is now he's come into an environment that the people he is fellowshipping with are afraid of him. So to a large degree, he ends up rejected where he came from. A misfit and God loves a misfit. When we are out of place, a special glory rests on us. When people know you are gifted, they are often mesmerized with your gifts, never understanding that behind every gift there is a huge price to be paid. People see the outer display of your gifts, not the inner pain of who you are. If you are favored, you will be hit. You will be punched. That is the meaning of this Greek translation. That's the meaning of being buffeted in my flesh. Now, we had debated about what the thorn in the flesh was for Paul. God leaves it opaque so that we can fill in whatever you need to and recognize that all of us have something different that punctures us, that makes us groan and cry out to God. We don't know what it was, but we know how we felt about it. It was painful, privately, humiliating, publicly. Some thought it was epilepsy, seizures, whatever it was, was publicly humiliating. Something that would bring him down. Now, Paul couldn't also see well. A brilliant man, life balances itself and no one is exempt from pain. You are not going to get through this world without using tears that God gave you. No matter how good looking or how accomplished you are, you will have something that punches you in the gut and leaves you fall before your creator till you realize that his grace, his grace is sufficient. There will always be something that humbles and humiliates you. He prayed three times about what overwhelmed him. What overwhelms you? I'm not referring to what you manage well. I'm talking about what you don't manage well. What knocks you down? Paul never mentioned anything about being shipwrecked, being beaten, being locked up in jail. But do me one favor, Lord, take this away because this overwhelms me. I'm drowning in it three times. Why would Paul have to pray three times? He didn't have to pray three times to raise the dead man who fell off the window. How is it that God works so good when you are praying about other people's problems than when it comes to your own? How could Paul have the power and courage to turn cities inside out but couldn't fix his own problem? God, if you could take this away, I would be a better dad. I'd be a better father. I'd be a better husband, a better wife, a better son, a better daughter. What do you do when God says no? Had everyone pray for the baby and you still had a stillborn? That's what's happening in this text. Let me take you back to Jesus. With a heavy heart, he prays to his father. Same person Paul prayed to. If it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. It was too much for him. He couldn't change the father's mind. And this was the son praying, mind you. I know you think that your plan is sufficient, but God's saying my grace is sufficient. I considered my grace before I allowed you to be hurt on this level. I considered your load before I put the pain in your life. But I am not going to take it away so that you know but my grace is sufficient for you. So we say, I have no answers, but I've got grace for it. I have issues I wrestle with, but I got God's grace for it. As our days are, so shall thy strength be. Tougher the day, greater the strength. Harder the test, greater the power. God is telling us, I measured the day before I released the strength and gave you enough for the day to get you through it. How can I be happy in a difficult time? Because God trusted you with trouble. You have to trust God when he says no. Nowadays, we want power to escape weakness in leisure, but Jesus offers power to endure weakness in love. Sometimes God says no. If we had unlimited power, we would forget that we need God. We come to the cross because we don't add up. God knows how to balance burdens and blessings, suffering and glory, to strengthen and not weaken, to give a sense of direction when we feel lost, to allow him to receive the glory without robbing us of our dignity. Paul was content with God's decision because he knew that God would supply enough grace for his trial. He has said to me, 
my grace is sufficient for you. That every time Paul prayed, God kept on saying, my grace is sufficient for you. After three times, Paul dropped the request. That wasn't a sign that he gave up on God. No, he rested in God's sufficient grace. Pray with me. God of grace, when the heaviness of my deficiencies suffocate me, when the weight on my soul becomes unendurable, hold my hand and whisper into my ears as I lie down in the green pastures of your grace, which is sufficient for me to find rest. Amen. For more details, please contact 9163-6425-2164 or email us to info at fibaonline.org. 